Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Um, this has been an exciting conference um, with the virtual format and seeing everyone's results um, has been really great. Um, I just want to mostly say that this talk is mostly some things that I've been thinking about and um, still very preliminary. I mostly work with uh, collaboration with um, Enrico Guaraldi and, and uh, Ro Kanan. So we have this uh, galactic outflow model um, that people have uh, spoken about for Lyman alpha emitters. So I'll just briefly review this. Um, there's this nice uh, cartoon on the on the bottom here um, that I uh, stole from a talk I saw once. Um, so essentially, what happens is the the line Lyman alpha line, um, just like other lines, goes in as a Gaussian. Um, and then is reprocessed by scattering in the ISM and CGM. And um, in the cartoon picture, splits into a double peak um, because of the resonant scattering. And then we have this picture at um, pre reionization epochs that the blue peak is eliminated while the red peak survives potentially. And the way to think about this um, actually, is that these these blue photons will eventually redshift into resonance in the IGM, and a single scattering can take it out of the line of sight and eliminate it. Whereas the the red photon, photons become more and more optically thin, um, and if you have an outflow, then then this helps with this process. <clears throat> so although this model is quite simple, um, the reality is that there's um, 3D geometry um, going on here, and and um, multi multi scale multi physics uh, things going on so in order to capture this uh, i just put together a, a wish list for for lyman alpha simulations um, there are many of these out there right now but um, sort of this is what i'd like to see is a, a proper cosmological environment um, this doesn't just mean the the local uh, galaxy scale but also from a larger scale as well um, reliable galaxy formation models that have been tested um, potentially down to redshift zero um, also realistic feedback uh, so what happens when you can't resolve um, scales you know below the simulation also uh, full radiation hydrodynamics and this is of course sort of the the cutting edge of a lot of these um, simulations these days um, and these models are also including um, dust growth and destruction mechanisms as well all right so together if we if we have this then then we can really combine um, the the simulations um, and the observations to to, to build these uh, synergies and and have a predictive uh, model um, and this of course you know I'm, I'm skimming over a lot of great work that has been done um, with other approaches um, mostly due to the, the time constraint here. Uh, but I wanna emphasize that, you know, of course, these simulations do exist for a number of, of groups. So this is an example from uh, the fire simulations, um, which uh, is work I did with uh, Zheng Zheng Ma. Uh, so this sort of illustrates uh, kind of the, the morphologies of the, this. This is the same galaxy, uh, just different redshifts where the star formation is sort of clustered and bursty and then settles down to a more uh, compact um, region. And um, the results from these uh, can, can sort of be shown as uh, evolution with time. And I'll just highlight a few of these, the escape fractions and the equivalent widths here. So on the left plot, we have the escape fraction um, and the, for a number of Lyman alpha relevant uh, things here. So um, especially the Lyman alpha line itself, the red is up, up here. This is what escapes the galaxy itself. And it's uh, quite high. This is uh, this galaxy was, was targeted to be sort of low dust, um, map, uh, sort of low mass, but massive enough to, that the, the starburst can, can really uh, produce quite a lot of Lyman alpha emission. So then once um, you add an IGM model, and I'm not claiming that this is a very um, good approach, but um, you, can, you can definitely um, 
suppress this this down, but but you you can see that uh, fairly robustly you, you don't lose um, you don't even lose an order of magnitude in your light uh, from these these systems, um, at least below redshift um, six for sure. Okay, so the um, the the other uh, point is that the equivalent widths um, vary across sight lines. So if you look at some directions, so in the the right plot here, um, the very dark blue regions uh, correspond to the cosmological uh, filaments or the cosmic web, and this is sort of inflow blue signature, and it really really suppresses the Lyman alpha flux uh, relative to other parts. And then the red parts, these are these um, outflow channels where feedback is, is very effective at sending um, the gas out. And this um, imprints on the Lyman alpha sign signature uh, because these are also um, the, the pathways for escape. Okay, so now that, that we sort of have this, um, this background, um, I've sort of been thinking about ways to, to make this more self-consistent uh, to connect the galaxies and the IGM uh, tra transfer as well, because there's sort of this approach of, of doing these uh, separately. And um, I sort of personally feel that there's, there's sort of a, a mismatch when you, when you do this. And of course, um, learning the physics from, from each side is, is very important individually, um, but to really compare uh, the statistics we we need to connect them uh, self consistently. So the idea here is that we'll take sort of a, a large scale, large box uh, simulation, and we can um, track the the UV background uh, spatially resolved from this, and then use that um, in a, another step. So the parent box informs the zoom region later on, and so we have. Uh, High cadence um, outputs uh, for for this, um, which can be interpolated um, later on. So, the second stage, of course, is to um, perform this Monte Carlo uh, calculations in the zoom regions, and then then you're doing you know all the, the fancy uh, bells and whistles there, um, and and the idea then is also that that you can um, stitch the this back together with the large box um, much more self consistently um, even you know reaching these um, you know tens of megaparsec um, rays away from these these galaxies um, including the scattering as well so this this transition region okay so next um, is then um, that you we've seen examples of this um, with my post talk, where then you connect back uh, to the, the parent and you can um, evaluate statistics uh, with, with models there. So we've come full circle with this approach. So I'll just show some efforts that we're making right now. We have, um, we're calling these the, the Thiessen simulations. And in the abstract, we called them Moria, but this was uh, taken and we didn't realize. So this is run with the repo RT. Um, you should think of this as essentially being um, illustrious TNG with uh, full radiation hydrodynamics um, run down to um, at least redshift 5.5 uh, through the completion of reionization um, or if it needs to later. So I'll mention that Enrico will give a proper introduction to these um, sim simulation suite. Um, so I, I won't mention too much except that it, it has these uh, dust um, AGN and, and all the galaxy formation model in it as well. So I'll move on to the zoom simulation side of things. So these um, we've been testing and sort of trying to calibrate these models a little bit more. And um, you can see that this is a, a redshift uh, 3.5 um, zoom simulation. And so I'm just rotating around in the, for, for the H alpha line here which um, very closely sort of um, captures the, the kinematics of the, the disk and the ISM. You can see that uh, rotation 
and velocity gradients are apparent. But you can also see that there's uh, quite these non-trivial uh, spectral morph morphologies uh, because it's not uh, quite settled down in a, in a flat, nice disk at this point. Um, also, another um, interesting thing with this type of analysis is this is performed with Monte Carlo. So the dust scattering is included. Um, and actually the, the escape fractions from, from a, a dust, um, when you include scattering, um, are, are actually higher than, than if you don't, uh, because the, the photons can scatter sort of around the dust. Um, and this includes these nice uh, dust models that, uh, that are in these, this, these codes nowadays. Okay, so this is the same galaxy zoomed out a bit. So we can see the halo more. Um, and then we can also see the Lyman alpha um, flux, the spectral profile, um, as you look around. And I sort of want to call your attention to like these, these channels where they open up. Uh, in particular, this is where the, the ionization, uh, ionizing photons are, are clearing these channels. And you, you sort of transfer from this, this very um, obscured blue phase um, into this, this open red uh, phase um, where things are, are very bright. And, um, and actually, encouragingly, the spectral line profile um, is quite similar um, in some of these directions to observations. Um, now, these models actually uh, need to be refined. So I'm not claiming that, that this is the, the final answer or anything like this, um, but we're still working on this. Um, it's nice to see the, the dominant red peak, um, even without an IGM at all. Um, but there, the, uh, we have to get the computing time uh, to, to run at the high resolutions that, that we want for this uh, as well. And I guess I'll just mention sort of this, this movie um, that, I, that I put together is just a false color rendering of the, the IFU data itself. So RGB is the spectra um, added in color space, and then um, the opacity, the darkness is, is the flux. Okay, so with that, um, this pretty much finishes my talk, but I will advertise um, a little bit here um, that we, we have these uh, radiative transfer tools. Um, we've put them directly inside a repo itself as a repo MCRT, uh, but I also have, have them um, in a standalone uh, version of, of Colt that I've been using uh, as well. So this I am hoping to uh, release publicly if I can, uh, you know, find find enough time to do this. But there's also some nice uh, nice tools in there. For example, these adaptive uh, convergence uh, imaging um, techniques. So um, with that, I'll just ask if you have any questions at this point. Great, thank you, Aaron. So time for questions. Uh, there's a question from Nick Gnedin. Do we know the resolution requirements for the simulations? Since the Lyman alpha opacity is so high, in principle, dust distribution on very small scales can affect the escape of Lyman alpha photons. Um, yes, so the this is a very uh, difficult question, and I, I think um, really the the approach here is to just keep trying um, to go to lower <clears throat> to higher and higher resolution, um, especially to test this out in in simulations that resolve um, out in the CGM. Um, to get those kind of resolutions, um, we can only do, of course, with with zooms and forced resolution and and so forth. Um, as far as the the dust is concerned. Um, most of the absorption um, in these dense regions does happen locally. And so um, this is a bit worrisome, especially if, if you can sort of um, go around these clouds with, with Lyman and alpha. Uh, so I think these convergence studies uh, really need, do need to, to happen, um, but you know, we, we already see actually like fairly, um, you know, converged results even when you get down to uh, 10, 10 
parsec resolution. Um, and this may be uh, a bit deceiving, um, but that's where we're at right now. All right, so the other one quick question from the other Maxim Torebesh. The TN TNG model uses an explicit subgrid sub description of the IGN. Do you know how this will affect your Lyman alpha calculation? Right, so um, yes, the idea of, of this is to, um, with these large box simulations, they of course have many pitfalls that, um, especially this uh, springle hernquist equation of state um, and, and many other uh, things that go into these calculations that, that um, are really just sort of, um, they're, they're not quite correct, but they're, <clears throat> they're well studied and they match the, the low redshift observations well. Uh, so the idea is that we, we can um, make these calculations on these boxes, um, but really the power will, will come when we apply the, the zooms um, that actually come from the parent uh, box itself. And so then in these models, then we have um, the smuggle model, which is um, still being refined, but it's actually, um, they're, they're pretty close as you can see. Um, so here, this is essentially equivalent to the fire models um, approach. So most of the Lyman alpha predictions will come from here, um, but, but yes, the IGM, um, there, there may be some pitfalls that we'll have to study when we get to this. Thank you. Well, 